Hi, this is Yosef Bhartia and welcome to TFR Let's Talk. And today we have with us once again, Mark Fussell, CEO of Diagrate. Mark, it's great to have you back on the show. It's wonderful to be here. Thank you for having me today. Yeah, and today we are going to talk about uh, the beta of new offering Catalyst. But before we talk about Catalyst, just quickly remind our viewers, what is Diagrid all about? Well, Diagrid is all about building developer technologies, particularly developers who are building modern distributed microservices applications. So we're a developer-focused company, uh, and we typically focus a lot on open source. And particularly, we're well involved with the CNCF project Distributed Application Runtime, or DAPA. And now let's talk about uh, Catalyst. First of all, what it is, and then we'll talk about the evolution phase because the beta has been announced. So we'll talk about the whole roadmap for it, but let's start with what is it? Yeah, so today we see a lot of complexity that developers still have to have to build these microservices applications. And what Catalyst does that we announced last week as a beta is it lowers the total cost of building microservices solutions, yet with the flexibility of choice of changing infrastructure services and enabling faster time to market all based on the open source governed project of Dapper. How does Catalyst fit into the larger Diagrid offering? Well, what we see today is that, you know, there's one uh, place where people host and run Catalyst, uh, sorry, Dapper today, um, and they host and run that on top of Kubernetes. So, to, you know, what we see when we talk to the thousands of customers uh, or users of Dapper, um, who run it on top of Kubernetes as a platform. We ride that sort of Kubernetes wave with an offering that we have today called Diagra Conductor, which is all about how you manage and deploy DAP on top of a Kubernetes environment. And Kubernetes is a great technology, uh, but it has a lot of complexities around it all. Um, and you know, that's why Conductor helps gen greatly simplify the management of DAP on top of Kubernetes environments. But where we've taken this to, and this is the important thing about Catalyst and why we're so excited about this beta is that we recognize that developers now have a whole criteria of building their applications on other platforms. In fact, we see a rise of developers who use functions-based platforms. We see a rise of developers who want to build applications on container-based platforms, for example, which just provide higher levels of abstraction. We also see a lot where existing developers take existing applications and more, put them in the cloud and want to modernize them. And so this is where Dapless Catalyst comes in. You know, you can now coordinate between say an application running on a container platform and Lambda function by doing a direct call between these things or coordinating a workflow between them in a much more comprehensive way using a single API than you could before. So you've broken out of just a, the Kubernetes ecosystem and can run your code anywhere. And yet, and here's the important part, take advantage of your infrastructure in order to still take part of, for example, messaging between services. So that's how it fits into our roadmap. For a long time, Kubernetes stories was more like a DevOps story, but you know, Diagrid, you folks uh, focus a lot on app developers. You also run uh, is dedicated days also for app developers at KubeCon as well. So can you also talk about how does Catalyst make life easier for develop app developers? At the same time, are there any specific kind of either application or industries that can benefit from Catalyst? That's a great question, and we should run down you know, some great examples of that. And I'll, I'll, I'll share some examples from an AWS developer perspective. So what you have to think about with Catalyst is there you are and you're having to build, let's take an example of like you may be modernizing a, an application you've lifted to the cloud, and it might be running on a set of VMs, for example. And now you want to say, well, I want to augment that because, for example, I want to add an LLM model to it to do some processing. But now I have to send a message from my VM where I had some code running to another process that will do some calculation, maybe uh, launch an LLM model to do some uh, processing on the actual data you sent to it all and then send it back to your application. Well, how would you do that? You're in a traditional world for an AWS developer. Somehow they would have to include that SDK for say the SNS service into their VM and so compile it into that. And then uh, after they've done that, you know, they would bring in a particular message broker that they attached to like an SNS service, and then they'd have to launch another process on their favorite uh, AWS platform and then do all the processing inside of that. Well, with Catalyst, you know, they can do a simple API call in order to invoke that piece of code running on another sort of container platform, for example, and be running, running this on Fargate. And all the heavy lifting of how that piece of code is discovered, how they send a message, how they do the call, how it does the retries, how it does the security is all taken care of for them. So they can greatly modernize existing applications. Um, they don't have to learn all the AWS infrastructure because 
Catalyst and Dapper have this plug-in component model that does all the heavy lifting for them. In fact, it takes away literally it's of 80% of their code of how they talk to their infrastructure. And it's a great example of how you simply sort of augment existing code you know, through a microservices architecture with additional processing around it or whether you're using another container platform or building an LLM. So does that help answer your question? It does help answer the question. And I want to just add to one more thing is that how well it fits into developers existing workflow or how much change they have to do to their workflow to, you know, reap benefits of Catalyst. And if you can also talk about, you know, that if they're not using Catalyst, this is what they have to do versus when they use Catalyst, this is what happens and it nicely fits into their workflow. Yeah, so when you use Catalyst, effectively, you're just simply doing API calls to do this heavy lifting for you. And, and the benefit is, of course, you can run your code on any platform of your choice. Um, whereas, you know, traditionally, you might have to only be able to host your code on top of Kubernetes because that's the only place you could sort of run Dapper as a piece of infrastructure. And then, you know, typically what you'd have to do, or what we have seen in the past is that if you weren't using something like Dapper, you would sort of build this thing from scratch yourself. So there you would go and you'd have to build your own sort of messaging platform. You'd put in particular SDKs, you'd be bound to particular technology, you'd be bound to a particular compute platform. Well, Catalyst takes all that away from you. What it effectively does is it um, allows you to be able to call directly onto an API. Um, it allows you to run your code wherever you want to choose to your particular infrastructure. And what you're able to do is that you're able to um, uh, abstract the underlying infrastructure itself by using the components and taking away that code. Um, another example I wish I'd really take here is sort of a workflow engine. Um, you see a lot of business code that has to do a piece of code like this, uh, send a message, when that message comes back, carry on to do another task and sort of write that workflow code yourself. And Catalyst has a workflow engine built as part of it all that allows you to do these workflow steps. So sort of Returning to sort of the AWS example, you know, the best way kind of to build workflow inside AWS would be like using step functions, but it's very limited because it only does it with Lambda. And so sort of the, the Catalyst uh, workflow engine allows you to do a series of coordinated tasks across your code wherever you choose to run it, whether on a container platform or on sort of Lambda functions as well, or a combination of both. So, you know, these are examples of greatly simplifying code, uh, greatly simplifying the development time that you have as a developer um, and simplifying you know the complexity of your application i think i may have had this discussion with you earlier also that every time we bring a new tool to kubernetes ecosystem uh, it may be seen as adding to that complexity but if you look at catalyst does it add to a bit of complexity to make things easier or actually eases some of that complexity Catalyst greatly eases that complexity. I like to think of the fact that you can do complex things with Catalyst, but without having the complexity itself. So an example uh, is that, you know, it's very common to build event-driven applications. We have to send messages between two services. And, you know, building those event-driven applications usually requires you having to take advantage of a particular message broker and then kind of bind your code particularly to that particular message broker and then build the whole infrastructure around all this. Now, instead, you know, with Catalyst, you know, you can simply do an API call, but take advantage of the message broker of your choice. In fact, the flexibility that you have inside here of, you know, choosing one message broker, returning to my AWS example, for example, the SNS service, and then deciding that you want to change that to use the MSK, you know, the hosted Kafka service as simple as swapping out a component call. So you get this design time flexibility that you have um, and kind of the reduced complexity of having to build um, your, all of the uh, connection to that underlying infrastructure into your code. Um, but at the same time, you know, the Catalyst APIs give you all sorts of capabilities like secure messages, bulk pub messaging, retries inside all those messages, observability, um, and you know, to see how those messages are flowing through your system. So a lot of this complexity is taken away from you by a simple API call. In fact, we like to think of Catalyst as layering a platform on the compute of your choice. Uh, it's kind of a new paradigm in many ways because what's happened till now is developers either have built their own or they've had to stitch together lots of other independent services. And what happens with Catalyst is you have a suite of integrated APIs 
from event-driven messaging to direct calls through service-to-service -service call interface, in, in, such as request reply or a workflow coordination engine. Does that make sense? It doesn't make sense. And once again, thank you so much. And since Catalyst is in a beta phase, can you also talk about what kind of pipeline roadmap you have for it when will it to be ready for you know production use cases? Yes, I mean, for us, it's very exciting to get Dapper out into a beta release because it allows us to get lots of many, many developers to start building applications and seeing their feedback of how they design these scalable distributed applications with you know, a microservices architecture. And that, as we look at our roadmap going forward, you know, we intend to add capabilities such as new APIs inside there, integrate with underlying infrastructure. You can flow security through that. And of course, importantly for us is to get this you know, to a GA a stable state so that you can take this into production. You know, right now, you, know, you won't be able to take this into production, but we have, we have lots and lots of feedback that you can have in terms of how the service will evolve. Um, and as we look towards next year, getting our service into production in, you know, is a key deliverable for us. Mark, once again, thank you so much for joining me today and talk about Catalyst, the whole ecosystem. Thanks for great insights. And as usual, I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me today. It's been a pleasure being here.